What is sweetened tuning? Aha! Sweetened tunings, whatever their derivations, are tuning methods that are designed to improve the way that certain notes sound when played together. When appropriately applied, these tunings adjust the spaces between certain notes so that said notes will sound better together. Aha. So I think we're going to need to talk about equal temperament here. So in Western music, we have a 12 note scale. On the guitar, that's denoted by the two dots here at the 12th fret. Equal temperament simply means that all of those intervals in the 12 note scale are equally spaced. There's no difference between them. And the reason we do this is somewhat as a bit of a compromise. The equal temperament system has made it so that every interval that you play, a major third, a perfect fifth, a major seventh, will work no matter what key you're playing it in. With sweetened tunings, we're essentially moving those intervals around to favor certain intervals, to favor major thirds or perfect fifths. And this can sound great if you're using it for a specific chord or specific interval, but it comes at the cost of other chords or other intervals sounding out of tune because we've adjusted that 12 tone equal spacing to favor something like a perfect fifth, for example. Now, temperament is a very, very deep subject and it gets into a lot of math and Pythagoras and all kinds of things. And if you want, there's some interesting videos that Adam Neely and Paul Davids have done that I would recommend checking out on this subject. But what I wanna to address today are some different sweetened tunings for guitar. I wanna see how moving these intervals around changes the feel and the tone of certain chords that I play all the time. Okay, so I've tuned my guitar up to standard equal temperament tuning and I'm using this Strobe app to do it. This is the Peterson strobo tuner app uh, this, this is not sponsored in any way by peterson i bought this app but we're going to use this because they actually have some of the sweetened tuning profiles built into it available for purchase so i'm going to buy some and we're going to try it out but we need something to compare it to so the guitar is perfectly in tune according to this strobe tuner app so i'm going to play some chords that we can have to reference later <laughs> Now the first method I'm gonna try is one I actually found on the gear page. This is an old thread from 11 years ago talking about sweetened tunings. Uh, and this person, Nash SG, posted, I picked this trick up from a Richard Lloyd lesson column a few years ago and it worked pretty well, especially if you're playing chords up the middle of the neck. And it goes on to describe how to do it. So basically, we're gonna start by tuning our low E string to pitch and then using that to tune the rest of the guitar. So the low E string is already in tune. Now let's see how to do this. Fret the E string at the 10th fret, that's gonna give me the note D, and I'm gonna use that to tune my D string to pitch. Next, fret the D string at the 5th fret to tune the G. Now fret the G string at the 2nd fret. This is for A. Now fret the A string at the 2nd fret. This is gonna give me B. Now fret the D string at the second fret, this gives you E. All right, let's see how this sounds. Interestingly, I actually do think it makes the chords in this area of the neck sound a little better. At the expense of the chords in the open position here, these cowboy chords seem to rub a little more than they should. Like that doesn't sound that great. 
great, but if we go up here, that feels a little bit better, a little bit sweeter, more in tune. Or this A minor voicing here. Those dissonant intervals seem to sit better with one another there than down here in this position. Now let's check out some of the sweetened tunings in the Strobo Tuner and see what they've got to offer. So I purchased their guitar and bass pack, which has several different sweetened tunings. And interestingly, there's actually a ton in this app for different instruments and even genre specific ones like bluegrass sweetened tunings. Uh, <laughs> this seems to be pretty in depth. But the one I'm gonna start with here is their standard sweetened guitar tuning. And their description here says, uh, especially useful for guitar with three saddle bridges, a la the Telecaster or shorter scale guitars. But I'm gonna do it with my uh, my Novo Cirrus J here and see how we fare. Actually, believe it or not, there is a pretty noticeable difference there. It does seem to be more in tune with itself, especially up here in these uh, B flat and A flat minor positions right here. This. That sounds really nice to me. So now I'm gonna try the acoustic sweetener. Now, according to the Peterson app here, tuning for acoustic guitar and standard tuning compensates for string deflection caused by fretting and capo use. So I think this one is gonna be a little bit more suitable, especially for these open position cowboy chords down here. So I am noticing a pretty big difference in this tuning, especially compared to the last sweetened tuning we did. The last one I had a lot of trouble getting this G sharp and B to ring true together in this E position here. But whatever offset they've dialed in for the acoustic one has compensated for that string deflection of that G sharp on the first fret, and it's ringing out much more in tune. big problem that uh, I would run into the studio a lot when recording acoustic guitars in the open position. We would literally have to sit and tune the G string to be perfectly in tune with whatever chords we were playing. Otherwise you get that weird out of tune major third thing, this uh, thing that happens if you press too hard down on the fretboard. The which doesn't sound great. So essentially all they're doing with this app is programming in specific offsets, pitch offsets for each string that apparently Peterson has determined uh, works best for whatever application they are designing. But the thing is, I don't think you have to buy the app and then buy the sweeteners to actually accomplish this. If you have any decent tuner uh, built into a modeler or a floor tuner that allows you to dial in offsets for strings, you can put your own sweetened tunings into the tuner. And so that's what we're gonna try and do now. 
So after digging around online, I actually found another offset sweetened tuning that I want to try. And these are James Taylor's offsets that he dials his Olsen acoustics in with. Uh, but we're not going to use the Peterson strobe app for this. I'm actually going to use the tuner on the Axe Effects for this. And if you have any kind of digital tuner that allows you to dial in offsets, this is how you would go about doing it. And this is the advantage of digital tuners nowadays. It allows you to get super precise. So I've got the guitar tuned to equal temperament standard right now, just right in the middle. And now I'm gonna dial in James Taylor's tuning. So I'm gonna open up the tuner here and page over to offsets. And the cool thing about the Axe Effects is you can literally go on a per string and dial in the offset uh, by the scent. Now, if you're not familiar, scents are a way of breaking down half steps or semitones. There's a hundred cents per semitone. So now let's tune with those particular offsets. It's a little bit interesting to me. I think it is designed more for acoustic and designed for capoing up and offsetting that uh, deflection that can happen when you capo, similar to the Peterson ACU tuning. And after doing a little bit of research, there seems to be some disagreement online as to whether or not the James Taylor tuning and the Peterson ACU tuning are the same. I've seen some sources say they are the same offsets and others say they're not. The Peterson tuners seem to keep their offsets under wraps, I guess to get you to buy the tuners. But overall, the James Taylor one seems like it's designed more for capoing up. I'm, I'm not really digging it in this open position here. And again, when you're playing this E chord with that G sharp, that G sharp is still a little bit sharp and it's rubbing against uh, the B there. So those are sweetened tunings. Now, I have to admit, I have some mixed feelings actually about this. On the one hand, I can absolutely see the need for dialing in a specific tuning for guitar because this is an imprecise and an imperfect instrument. There are lots of ways that guitar builders try and get around the equal temperament sort of tuning rubs that we have between uh, intervals, fan frets, for example, or offset frets. And sweetened tunings are an attempt at this, but I'm not sure that I would use these on a regular basis with the exception of the Peterson GTR sweetened tuning. I think that's the best one of the tunings that we tried today. Uh, but it is interesting that they have a whole variety of different tunings built into their tuning system and their app, for example. The other thing to take into consideration here is when you're playing with another guitar player or other instruments, the tuning needs to be relatively close to what they're doing. This James Taylor one, for example, is tuned so flat that you would need your bass player and possibly your keys player to match your tuning or else you're gonna sound out of tune compared to them. 10 to 12 cents flat on the low strings is enough that you would notice compared to a guitar that was in standard tuning equal temperament tuning, I should say. But with that said, I think my favorite was the Peterson GTR tuning. I think it was the most well-balanced. I think it handled the uh, G sharp, that major third in this open E chord position very well. And that's one that I could actually see myself using. And in fact, I'm gonna dial it in to the Axe Effects offsets here and use it for a little while and see how it works. See how the guitar sits in mixes that I make and uh, with other instruments. But I wanna know what you think about the sweetened tunings. Uh, is this something that you use? Are you interested in using it? Let me know in the comments section down below. Once again, this video was not sponsored by anyone, not sponsored by Peterson or anywhere else, but if you would like to support the channel, you can check out the links in the description box down below to find my video courses, uh, as well as links to the gear that I used in today's video, which are affiliate links. So if you buy something, I earn a small commission, which helps me continue to create these videos. So thank you. Don't forget to subscribe down below if you haven't already. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Rhett Thank you guys so much for for watching and remember there is no plan B.